Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. This is part five of a series I'm doing of basic concepts of what I teach. We've spoken about the mind, I've given an analogy of the mind, we've spoken about warning signals, and I've spoken about the difference between thoughts and memories. So go listen to those four podcasts before you listen to this one, if you haven't already listened. And in this one, I'm going to go a little deeper into what is the mind. So the mind is considered to be the hard question of science. We often hear things like consciousness, we can't measure it, we can't really research it, it's the hard question of science, it is elusive. I often interview people and hear people and read about people saying things and scientists and, and writers and so on, saying that the mind is it's so difficult, we can't really test the mind. I disagree with that. The mind is the most obvious thing in the world because your mind is your aliveness. I'm different to you. You're different to me. You're different to your your partner, your children, your business colleagues, your friends. We're all different. And each and every one of us is experiencing life. We're alive, experiencing life and contributing to life. Because it's not just about you, it's about you in the world. You're impacting people. Whether you like it or not, you're doing something. You're doing stuff. That is all mind. Your ability to be an alive human being, experiencing mind, experiencing life, is what mind is. If you were dead, or if I had a dead person sitting in the studio with me, which I don't, thank goodness, that person wouldn't be, that dead person wouldn't be doing what you're doing, which is listening to me, watching me, processing what I'm saying, thinking and, and feeling and making choices about what I'm saying, having experiences in response, going, you were doing something prior to listening to this, you'll go do something after listening to this. That's all mind. Mind is the product of you in life being able to experience and produce life, produce what you do. So to measure mind is not that difficult. We just have to look at how you show up. What are you doing? What are you saying? What are you feeling? What is your perspective? That's on a sort of general functional level. But what are you, who are you? I am Dr. Caroline Neef. I have certain degrees. I have certain experience studying. I teach on mental health. I write books. I teach people how to learn. Those are all the product of my mind. So we can look at that. How effective am I at those? How effective? How am I self-regulating? What is my, I'm being married to my husband for 35 years next year. We've been together 36 and a half years. That is my mind enabled me to have this experience. If I was dead, I couldn't have that experience. In terms of how effective that is, would be in terms of looking at the quality of my marriage, how I've changed, how I've grown. If I get irritated or if I say something unkind or I react in a negative way, being able to self read this is all mind. So the product of mind is you in life. So mind is your aliveness. It is your ability to take the experiences of life and process them into your brain. Your mind is driving the functionality of the physical. So we are not our brain. You are not your brain. You drive your brain. You are your mind and you drive your brain. Your mind needs the brain and in all its beautiful complexity and your mind needs your body in all of its beautiful complexity for you to be able to function. Because how else are you going to show up? So my mind is using my brain and my body and that combination, voila, here I am telling you about the mind and telling you about all these things. So it's this, it's this beautiful mystical, magical, but pretty obvious interaction between the mind and the brain and the body that enables you to be part of life. Such a gift, such an incredible, exciting thing. Sometimes life is awful and sometimes we have terrible things happen to us and that can affect how we function and that affects how we show up and it affects how our, the health of our brain and the health of our body. And that's why we need to have mental health support in terms of the stuff I teach, in terms of therapy, etc., And that's all mind interaction. If you didn't have your mind, you couldn't benefit from what I'm telling you. You couldn't use the neurocycle, which is a system that I've developed to help you manage your mind. You couldn't benefit from therapy, coaching, counseling, etc., because you need your mind to do that. Your mind is driving every biological function. Without your mind, your brain will disintegrate. Once again, if we had a dead person sitting next to me, their, bri their brain and body would be disintegrating depending on how long they've been dead for. And if it's not preserved, they're going to be smelling soon as well. So there's, in other words, your body and brain are not doing anything. 
But when you're alive, your mind is this energetic force that is driving the functionality of your brain and your body, enabling you to experience life. And not just experience life. Being alive means all the functionality of your brain and your body are happening too. You have short, medium, and long-term genes that are constantly producing new cells at a rate of somewhere between 800,000 and a million every second. So that means you are, your mind is driving that process. If you were dead, you would not be making those cells. Your genes would not be functioning and, and, and doing what they do to enable you to actually be alive and a functioning human being. Your heart wouldn't be beating. Your brain wouldn't be able to have oxygen and blood flow and all the different parts respond in the way that they should. Your neurochemicals wouldn't be working. Your endocrine system wouldn't be working. Your HP axis, your liver, your skin, nothing would be working. But because you're alive, everything is working. There's electromagnetic blood flow through your brain and your body. There is, and through your blood, there is our neurochemicals flowing. There's an endocrine system working. There's an immune system that is looking after your body because of your mind. Your mind is your aliveness, and therefore our mind needs mind management because our brain and our body simply do what the mind tells it to do. So if we don't manage our mind, our mind is taking life and putting it through the brain. The mind needs the brain and the body to experience life. So if we have toxic experiences, those toxic experiences build in a messy way into the brain and the mind. And you've seen me show this often, which is a toxic thought. And these therefore damage the brain and the body. And therefore we have the result of that. And over long, over time, increased levels of toxicity can increase our vulnerability to different types of diseases by 35 to, 35 to 75, sometimes 98%. So if we know how to manage our mind, we can be so much more proactive in keeping our brain and body healthy. And we're not, we, it's okay to be a mess. I'm not saying you're, gonna have to, you're not an avatar. You're not going to walk around getting this right. It's an ongoing process. I'm still working on this. But I'm getting healthier and healthier and healthier all the time and learning to recognize when my body's not healthy and responding to that and putting through things and so on because I'm constantly a work in progress. So we hear about a work in progress, we hear about journey, we hear about all these things and people talk about this all the time, but there's a scientific validity to this. As we manage our mind, we drive our telomeres, which are on our chromosomes, which are part of our DNA, which are responding to our emotional state, which are determining how the quality of your the cells that you make function, which determine the quality of your organs and your systems and therefore your health. So I've seen in my research, and we're doing more studies on this, is that if we don't manage our mind, we can our biological age of our body can be years and years older than our actual chronological age. Just recently, I had a big scare where my appendix burst and I thought it was gastro and didn't pay attention to, didn't pay attention to the warning signals quickly enough. And I landed up going into septic shock and nearly dying. And they said I had hours left to live if it hadn't been for finally my husband saying, hey, you can't, you know, you just I literally passed. I literally collapsed. Got into hospital emergency surgery, long term, long story short, Thank goodness for, for medicine, fix up my body, where that came from, who knows, whether it came from me not managing certain things or whether it was just something in my body that was not strong, whatever. The fact is that I didn't listen immediately to the warning signal, but once I did and it was healed and it was fixed and I had the surgery, I my body healed very quickly. And just recently I went for my post-op and my surgeon said, you would have been in hospital for seven to eight to 10 days. I don't let my patients out of hospital with this level of septic shock and near-death experience within seven to 10 days. I went home on day three. I came in on Tuesday night. I was home by Thursday lunchtime. And she said it's like miraculous that they, that, and, and I, I attribute it, yes, I'm healthy, etc. but my mind, my mind, I work at my mind and it's definitely contributed to my healing. Yes, I should have listened quicker. And that's something I've learned. I've learned now to listen to the signals of my body and to respond quicker. I'm not getting younger. I'm 58. I need to watch those signals from my body. There is natural wear and tear. So I learned a lesson, but I also learned the lesson of the power of the mind. Your mind is phenomenal. And as we learn to get to know our mind, we're going to get to know ourselves. And that's what I try and help you with in this podcast. So thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to listen to the other four parts. And next week is part six in the series where I'll be talking about intrusive thoughts being your new best friend.